340 kidnapped Kankara schoolboys freed as President Buhari announces reopening four land borders in Nigeria. 20 Nigeria generals and Lagos State Governor Sanwa Olu test positive for coronavirus. Omale recounts his arrest ordeal in Uganda while ace comedian Joss Too Funny gets married. Also see the latest happenings in the world of sports where Robert Lewandowski has just been crowned the FIFA's best men's player of 2020. Welcome to Cydermex Universal's Trending Last Week video, where you get the hottest gist that happened during the past week. If you have not, kindly subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell icon to know when we drop our next cool video. This week, Nigerian ace comedian Josh Alfred, popularly called Josh Too Funny, got married in a private ceremony. It included a stop at the Ministry of Interior, Federal Marriage Registry Ikoyi, on Friday the 17th of December 2020, where he and his wife picked up their marriage certificate. Recall that the comedian had announced getting engaged to his longtime girlfriend in October 2019. Fans rejoiced with Josh on hearing the news of his marriage. Emmanuel Iwueke, another Nigerian comedian who uses the stage name Crazy Clown, is expecting his first child with his fiancée Jojo. The news went public after Crazy Clown posted a lovely picture of his heavily pregnant fiancée and himself. Jojo rocked her pregnancy bump garbed in African native attire and Crazy Clown captioned the photo, My Woman Crush. This week, celebrity couples were really at it in full swing. On the international scene, Cardi B gifted her husband, Offset, an exotic Lambo Aventado as VJ for his birthday. Watch the WAP crooner lead her man to his birthday gift amidst friends and family. The car is said to be worth about $600,000. Still on Celebrity Love Life, Instagram influencer Laura Ikeji and her husband Ogbona Kanu celebrated their fourth wedding anniversary with loved up pictures. Ogbona Kanu, a former Nigerian footballer, shared a lovely video of his beautiful wife on social media while Laura posted a TikTok video to mock those who said her marriage wouldn't last four months. It has not been all lovey-dovey in the entertainment space this week. Nigerian singers Omale and Thames have been arrested in Uganda on Sunday the 13th of December 2020. Their arrest had led to a massive unrest on social media with both celebrity and fans calling for their immediate release. The matter had even appeared more serious when images of the singers and their managers in cuffs and in court emerged online. According to the Kampala Metropolitan Police Public Relations Officer, the arrests were made because the concert they attended was unauthorized. Also, the police claimed that they had suspected the Nigerian entertainers of engaging in acts that could further spread the coronavirus. Eventually, Omale, Thames and their managers were free due to the intervention of the Nigerian mission in Uganda. Omale revealed that it had been a close call and they had even seen the insides of Ugandan prisons as well. On Monday the 14th of December 2020, majority of people using Google services reported experiencing an outage in the early hours. Such services like YouTube, Gmail, Google Assistant and Google Docs were down for about an hour. Google later acknowledged the outage and blamed it on its overwhelmed servers. This was a first of its kind for Google, with complaints and tweets about it trending number one on Twitter with more than one million tweets. The frantic reaction showed how reliant people have become on technology and the power of the internet. Internet. And we saw another example, this time locally in Nigeria. On Wednesday the 16th of December 2020, the Nigerian Communications Commission, the NCC, announced that telecommunications companies have two weeks to block SIM cards not registered with the National Identity Numbers, NIN. This meant that SIM users who fail to comply with the directive by the 30th of December 2020 will be blocked. Sources claim that the decision came after stakeholders agreed that urgent drastic measures had become inevitable to improve the integrity and transparency of the SIM registration process. Social media users did not fail to air their dislike on the policy, which would surely inconvenience many. While this policy may not have been found favorable, here is one that Nigerians may smile at. President Muhammadu Buhari has ordered the immediate reopening of four border crossing points in the country. According to the administration, the land borders were closed last year to curb smuggling of rice and arms. It had explained that it threatens efforts to boost local production and security. Also, the closures were put in place to generate state revenues through import duties. Seme border to the southwest, Ilela and Megatari border in the northwest, and Fun in the south will be opened. In addition, other land borders will be reopened on the 31st of December 2020. Another piece of good news this week on a national scale is that the 340 kidnapped Kankarak schoolboys have been returned on Thursday the 17th of December 2020. However, 
The Katsina state governor, Aminu Bello Masari, said some of the boys are still missing. He added that those that were released were found in a forest in the neighboring Zamfara state. Earlier on Thursday, a video of the schoolboys with the Boko Haram military group surfaced. In the video, a teenager surrounded by a large group of boys said he was one of the 520 students kidnapped by the gang of Abu Shikau. The Kankara Secondary School kidnap had happened on Friday the 11th of December 2020. On the fateful day, gunmen suspected to be bandits invaded the government science secondary school in Kankara. While some of the students abducted escaped during the incident, an estimated 300 plus others were taken. After he had secured the release of the Kankara students, Buhari assured Nigerians that others being held by terrorists or bandits in other parts of the countries will also be freed. He mentioned his efforts on the return of the Chibok girls and Dapshi school abduction as well. Buhari also commended the partnership and the collaborative efforts of the governments in Katsina, Zamfara and military which led to the release of the students in a statement by his media aide Garba Shehu. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwo Olu rewarded the best graduating student of the Lagos State University LASU, Oladimeji Shotunde with a cash prize of 5 million naira and a postgraduate scholarship. The announcement came during the varsity's 24th convocation ceremony which was held virtually on Thursday the 17th of December 2020. Shotune was a student of the Department of Business Administration and he graduated with a cumulative grade point average of 4.95 out of a possible 5.0. In addition to the prizes, he was also offered automatic employment in the state's public service. English side Chelsea has been drawn to face Spanish side Atletico Madrid in the Champions League last 16 round, while Liverpool will be entertained by last season semi-finalist RB Leipzig. Chelsea won't have an easy tie in their hands, especially against Diego Simeone's side, who are currently placed second in La Liga Santander, level on points with Real Sociedad, with two games in hand. Another English side, Manchester City, will play German side Borussia Mönchengladbach, who are in the knockout stages for the first time in their history. Other last 16 ties include Lazio vs Bayern Munich, Porto vs Juventus, Barcelona vs Paris Saint-Germain, Sevilla vs Borussia Dortmund and Atalanta versus Real Madrid. The ties will take place over two legs with seeded group winners scheduled to play away in the first legs and at home in the return matches. Arsenal Football Club has been drawn with Portuguese side Benfica in the last 32 stage of the Europa League. Manchester United on the other hand will gear up for a fight against Spanish side Real Sociedad who have been in top form this season. United led to the trophy by Jose Mourinho in 2017, dropped into the draw after being eliminated from the Champions League and must now prepare to face Real Sociedad as former player Adnan Januzas and ex-Manchester City midfielder David Silva return to Old Trafford. Mourinho, who leads another Premier League side, Tottenham Hotspurs, will be looking to repeat his heroics of 2017 when his side plays Austrian side Wolfsburger. Meanwhile, Leicester City in the last 32 for the first time will play Slavia Prague. Other notable clashes to look out for in Europa League last 32 draw include Red Star Belgrade vs AC Milan, Salzburg vs Villarreal, Braga vs Roma, Young Boys vs Bayer Leverkusen and Lille vs Ajax. One of the stars of the Formula 1 2020, Max Verstappen, brushed world champions Mercedes aside to finish off the season with an unexpectedly dominant victory for the Red Bull at the Abu Dhabi GP. The win was only Verstappen's second of the year and one he said he would have to fight hard for with Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton starting behind the surprise pole sitter. Despite an early safety car, Verstappen was comfortable throughout the race. Bottas clung to the second spot and held off his teammate Hamilton who was uncharacteristically off the pace. Sources say that the 2020 title winner was still feeling the effects of coronavirus on his F1 return. Alex Albon finished fourth in the other Red Bull, despite a late charge as well. The more decisive battle, however, came behind the season's fastest car, as Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz finished in fifth and sixth to clinch third place for the McLaren in the Constructors' Championship, their best result since 2012. Bayern Munich target man Robert Lewandowski has beaten last year's winner Lionel Messi and Juventus forward Cristiano Ronaldo to be crowned the best men's player of the year at the best FIFA football awards in Zurich on Thursday the 17th of December 2020. The Polish striker scored 55 goals in just 47 games last season to help his club to a title treble. He also finished as the top scorer in the league, the League Cup and the UEFA Champions League.
Meanwhile, Manchester City defender Lucy Bronze won the Best Women's Player Award. Nominations from national team captains and head coaches, an online ballot of fans and 200 media representatives decided the winners. It's the first time Robert Lewandowski has won the award, with Barcelona forward Messi or Juventus' Ronaldo also triumphing. Liverpool manager Kurgan Klopp was named the men's coach at the Best FIFA Awards for the second consecutive year. He didn't share the success alone as four of his players were also named in the men's team of the year alongside Manchester City midfield player Kevin De Bruyne. Klopp beat off competition from Leeds boss Marcelo Bielsa and Bayern Munich's Hansi Flick who were the other finalists for the award. Having won the 2018-2019 Champions League, Liverpool triumphed once again, winning the 2019-2020 Premier League as the club ended a 30-year wait to win the top flight title. Hoong Min Sun's sublime individual effort for Tottenham against Burnley last December has been named the best goal in the world over the last year. The South Korean ran the length of the field and converted a solar effort having collected the ball on the edge of his own area during the 5-0 Premier League win. Sun joins the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Neymar, James Rodriguez, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Mohamed Salah in claiming the award. Premier League clubs, during a shareholders meeting on Thursday the 17th of December 2020, voted against allowing teams to make five substitutions per match. This was the third time they were voting against the policy. Many PL managers have called for the top flight to adopt the change, with Jurgen Klopp calling it a necessity and Pep Guardiola labelling the current three substitute limit a disaster. The Premier League currently remains the only major league in Europe not to have kept the five substitute limit that was introduced when domestic football re- resumed towards the end of last season. They have voted against the protocol twice prior to the 2020-2021 campaign and it has again failed to meet the threshold of 14 votes in favour at a meeting of the 20 clubs. However, teams will be permitted to name 9 players on the bench, up from the previous 7. This will go into effect from this weekend. The ATP has confirmed that the Australian Open men's tournament will be delayed by three weeks due to the coronavirus and will now run from February 8th to the 21st. The association announced an update for the first seven weeks of the season as tennis continues to navigate its return during the COVID-19 pandemic. Doho Qatar will host qualification for the first major event of the year from January 10th to the 13th. This will allow time to travel and a 14-day quarantine period for all players and support staff travelling to Melbourne. Due to the pandemic, Auckland's ASB Classic and the New York Open will not take place while the ATP said it was attempting to secure new dates for the Rio Open, which was scheduled to start on February 17th but now conflicts with the Australian Open. It is also unclear if the women's and wheelchair sides of the draw will commence when scheduled. The ATP Challenger Tour season will start on January 18th after qualification for Melbourne concludes. Giannis Antetokounmpo has signed a five-year contract extension worth a reported $228.2 million with the Milwaukee Bucks. This is the richest deal in NBA history. His agent confirmed the total value and it beat the mark of $228 million that Houston Rockets guard James Harden set in 2017. Had the Greek forward Antetokounmpo not signed, he would have been eligible for free agency after the 2020-2021 season. His new contract contract, however, permits him to opt out of the deal after four years. Giannis helped the Bucks finish top of the Eastern Conference last season with the best record in the NBA. About 20 Nigerian generals reportedly tested positive for coronavirus. After the death of Major General Johnny Refin, the general officer commanding 6th Division Port Harcourt River State. According to reports, the infected generals came in contact with Irifin during the Chief of Army Staff's annual conference 2020. Since the Major General's death, the conference has been cancelled. Meanwhile, every other person that attended the conference was initially directed to go into isolation. This includes the Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tuku Buratai, the Minister of Defense Bashir Magashi and GOCs from nearly all the Army divisions nationwide. Also this week, the Lagos State Commissioner for Health announced that Governor Babajide Sanwa'ulu tested positive for coronavirus. Akina Boyomi said the Governor was experiencing mild symptoms and fatigue typical of a mild case of COVID. Sanwa'ulu was undergoing treatment and is being closely monitored at home by a clinical team from the Infectious Disease Hospital in 
in Yaba. In addition, the commissioner enjoined Lagosians to keep celebrations to a minimum and be observant and responsible in their interactions to avoid spreading coronavirus even faster. The number of coronavirus infections in Nigeria, and especially in Lagos State, is on the rise. This is why Afropop singer Davido has decided to cancel the first ever DMW Live in concert, which was slated to be held on the 18th of December 2020 at the Echo Hotel and Suites. Davido explained that he is cancelling the show as the cases increase because he values the health and well-being of his fans, employees and artists. He mentioned that many fans had already purchased tables at the event and they will still enjoy the DMV live concert in the very near future. As of Friday the 18th of December 2020, the total number of confirmed coronavirus infections in Nigeria was 77,013. 1,212 deaths have been reported, while 67,484 patients have recovered and been discharged from isolation facilities across the country. This means that the number of active cases was 8,317. This is where we draw the curtains of this week's Trending Last Week episode. If you enjoyed this episode, like this video and share with with your friends. Also, share your thoughts with us in our comment section below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exciting content and follow us on Instagram at Cydamex ENT and on Twitter at Cydamex.